This is my absolute pride and joy. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why. This is my Toyota Avensis Estate X Taxi. I bought this three years ago for 500 pounds. I think it's the best money I've ever spent. And I'm gonna tell you why you should get one of these as well. Now, I know that this channel is normally about me doing some sort of sport. However, this comes up quite a lot. Whenever I'm at a race or something, and this car is in shot or I talk about it, I get a fair few questions essentially asking me, what on earth is it? Why have you got it? And people just find it funny more than anything. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about it. So it's on a 2010 plate. It has 256,000 miles on the clock. It is a two litre diesel. And this is my workhorse. This is my day-to-day -day car. I absolutely love it. So the general condition of the car, I think for its age and for the life it's lived, it's actually in very good condition. The previous owner absolutely babied this car and he hates that I don't wash it, but it is mine now. Scuffs and scrapes like that, they happen. But what that means is that when, whenever I go anywhere, I'm not precious at all about where I leave this or oh, it's in a small car park or oh, somebody's parked next to me, will they open the door on me? So I don't care about it because as I said earlier, this is my pride and joy, but it's just that I'm not stressing about my perfect car picking up its first ding or something like that or it losing value because of a, a little knock or something. This scuff here was from, I saw somebody drive into this and drive off, <laughs> like if it was a, a very nice car. I was upset anyway, but I'd be very upset. I've been able to get over that and not have to worry about it or stress about it because, well, it is just part of the, you know, the, the age of the vehicle. I'm not going to you know, lose any sleep over it. So in terms of driver aids, this car has pretty much everything that I'd ever want, and especially for the price point. I've got cruise control, I've got dual zone climate control, I've got Bluetooth so I can play my sick tunes out, I've got electric handbrake, reversing camera. I don't know what else I would want in a car at this price point. It does absolutely everything. Turning away miles on the motorway on cruise control, where it just laps them up. Economy isn't the best. It sits around 35 to 40 miles per gallon, depending on how I'm driving it. But because the vehicle is so cheap, I don't stress too much about what the economy is like. I'm also not driving a huge amount of miles at the minute, so it doesn't really matter that it's not that efficient on, on fuel. I tend to do between anywhere between seven and 10,000 miles a year, so not massive in today's day and age. Practicality wise, this is where this car comes into its own. Massive boot, full flat seats. At the minute I've got a bike box in the back. Often I have bikes and other things. If we're going to do a tip run, I can chuck loads of stuff in the back. There really is lots and lots of space. There's even a bit of storage underneath the bottom of the boot here. So space is not a problem. If I ever want to get people in the back, there's plenty of space in the back. The head seats, uh, the roof's quite high as well. It really does tick a lot of boxes for practicality. And because of the age and cost of the vehicle, when you're cramming stuff in it, like I'm not too particular about, oh, it's just scuff that or oh, just squeeze that in it's really really useful conscious that I might be tempting fate here but you might be thinking oh but I bet it's an older car it's always breaking down well that is not the case this is the first time I've actually popped the bonnet in a long time just for this video I've had this car three years and in those three years it hasn't had any major problems when it comes to MOT things that you struggle to get through the MOT like the failing are uh, bushes suspension general wear and tear things some of the things are going to happen on any car so like you know brakes tires those sorts of things bushes is more of an age related thing but none of them are huge hugely expensive. I did have a big expense last year to get through the MOT. There were some rear bushes that went and you can only get the whole suspension on, not the bush. So that was expensive. But as an average for the last three years in total, it's cost me £2,100 in addition to like tyres and brakes. Now I don't think that is a huge amount of money to maintain a car for three years, during which time I've done about 30,000 miles. So it has certainly done some miles and touch wood, it's got many more miles left on it. As I said earlier, it's got 256,000 of miles on the clock so quite a lot but a lot of people a lot of Toyota fanboys will say it's just barely ran in. Actual performance wise obviously there isn't really any it's 130 horsepower this vehicle is about two tons so it's not that light so it's not fast at all but this is not what not what it's for the chassis you know lollops around like mad when you're driving it's not made for performance this is very much a, a, a comfort uh, a comfort car. I've just noticed as well that the battery is not completely strapped down, but what I'll do is I'll just close the bonnet and pretend I haven't seen that. So my final point is about this car, and I'm not gonna go full Dave Ramsey like financial advice on you. Obviously I can't give you any financial advice, but I'm at a point in my life where I'm early 30s. So like I'm thinking about, you know, mortgage and career and all these sorts of things. And if I continue just like living like I'm 18 and just chucking money around, I'm never gonna have any. So things like this make a real difference to what the rest of my life might look like. 
I actually love cars. I used to be a bit of a petrol head and I had a track car and a Corsa VXR and all sorts pre-buying a house. And as my life's grown, obviously you, you, your hobbies change and your priorities change and so on. And it just so happens that vehicles has really fallen down that list of priorities. I would absolutely love to have a, a fast weekend car or a nice car to drive or whatever. But because of the fact of how expensive cars are, I just see them as, a, as an expense. It's just a method of getting to work. It's just a method of going to somewhere where you want to go and do something. So until I'm at the point where money doesn't matter or anywhere near as much, I will continue to drive, obviously not this car, it's not gonna last forever, but like vehicles that are cheap and I'm not paying hundreds of pounds a month to, to drive a car and so on. I've not got anything against people who do that. People have different priorities and like to do different things. And some people really like having a new car and that's absolutely fine. I like being able to do other things and not chucking money at cars. So this is just, you know, my choice. The other thing is, is how you, like how you live. And uh, Liz, my other half and I, we live, again, I'm not I'm gonna go full Dave Ramsey, but we don't have any like consumer debt. So we don't have a credit card or buy things on finance other than a mortgage. I couldn't quite buy a house out, right? Um, so I think when it comes to vehicles, we're not gonna take on any sort of lending for that. Now, people do buy cars outright, but it feels different when you're spending, for example, 10,000 pounds and you might finance it over two or three years or whatever, and it's a couple or a few hundred pounds a month, like it feels like, oh, that's not as much of an expense. Whereas if you are like, say, right, take 10 grand out of your savings and spend it on a car, you're less likely to do it, aren't you? Because it feels like it's a, a lot more money. And that's the mentality I have when I try and buy anything. If you follow this channel day to day, you'll know that I, I buy a lot of secondhand bikes and bike parts and so on. And I often spend a fair bit of money on those sorts of things, but I always try and get the best value that I can. And I see that buying a secondhand used, very used, very, very used car, cash as good value and then I can put that money to use elsewhere now I'm by no means loaded and have loads of money and so on but driving a car like this does certainly help with you know living month to month and we've seen recently things like you know the mortgage rates go up and uh, utility bills go up and food bills go up and all those things and I like to think it gives us a bit more breathing space in life for those things to change so that is why I drive a 500 pound car and obviously cycling and triathlon is expensive so it helps with that so uh, go, let me know down below have you got anything similar to this do you have you got got like a you know a beta a car with a story or the any other areas in your life where you're particularly like frugal or you think no that is the I can get by the bare minimum by using this one thing I'd be really interested to hear so I'm going to end today's video there a bit of a strange one I know but what I wanted to cover so thank you very much for watching hit like and subscribe not jazz and I will see you again very soon subscribe if you're new around here